Hey guys, Eric here with another uh, game tryout video uh, series where I basically just shed some light on some underrated games that have flying under the radar that need to basically need another shot at redemption because these are not bad by any means. They're all fun in their own various different ways and they deserve to get a little bit more attention. Uh, with that being said, we're going to jump right to N64 and into a sports title. Believe it or not, um... I want to say Nintendo was probably the one franchise I was most comfortable with sport titles. I don't really know why, even though PlayStation gave it a lot of justice. It's weird. But um, this, I believe, was the first sports game I played on the N64, and it was a ton of fun. Um, to all my Canadian and hockey fans, this one is for you guys. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey, guys. Pretty simple of a game. You press start after you turn on the console, of course. Remember that. You know, it's a process. Um, choose your team and play. Uh, it's very simple just to get into a basic game. Uh, start a whole season. The uh, the uh, the player, or the computer AI rather, it adjusts its difficulty the, uh, during the game so it doesn't become like a complete and total uh, one-sided game. Um, I recommend that if you're into hockey, um, if you're really into competitive gameplay with friends, especially sports and hockey, um, a lot of fun. It looks really good on the N64. I know some people uh, get are get a little upset with the N64 and the graphics, but honestly, I, I have I have nothing negative to say about that one. Uh, moving on uh, is the 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 RPG series that got me into RPGs, and that is. Faxanadu on the NES, if you have not played this, the best way I can describe it is, sounds like Final Fantasy, plays like Adventures of Link, but in a good way, although to be honest, the Adventures of Link is more challenging than a bad game, um, agree to disagree on that one, um, yeah guys, really really fun game, a lot of adventuring in this game, uh, Left to right travel. No, nothing is, is a linear straight line in here. Town to town exploration. Uh, puzzle solving. Uh, a dungeon exploration, guys. It is quite possibly one of the best underrated RPGs I can ever announce. And I I cannot praise it enough. It is That game is very cheap in any game, so I recommend you check it out immediately. Um, it really does deserve um, a look at. I... <laughs> kind of going on here. Um, ever since the first day I played it, everyone keeps telling me about how great Final Fantasy is. And yes, it is good. But that game, I felt, if it had a chance and it had more behind it, it could have blown everybody's minds. So, give it a shot. I like it a lot. I'm sure a lot of you people who love RPGs will like it a lot. Um, it's not overly complicated. It is a ton of fun. You owe it to yourself to try it if you have not played it and you are a fan of RPGs. Um, now this next one might get me into some trouble here, not because I hate it or anything, but because the opinion on it seems to be turning from negative into good, and that's Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube. Luigi is a Ghostbuster. That's it. Nothing negative can be said about it. The game is so much fun. The music fits perfectly with the setting. It doesn't make it too dark. It makes it enjoyable to play. Never a dull moment playing Luigi's Mansion, although I will say it's a tad confusing at times to navigate the house, but if you just dedicate yourself to paying attention to the, the floor layouts on the Game Boy Horror, which I thought was cute, by the way, um, the game is a ton of fun. It's a, becoming a little bit harder to find. Not too expensive. I've, I've seen them go from five all the way up to 30 bucks i recommend if you can keep it somewhere in like the 10 to 15 or the 10 to 20 range it should be worth it it's, it's a ton of fun um but yeah it's it's luigi a lot of people didn't like it because it wasn't mario and and to be fair mario is mario and he's been in some crap too but this this game is it, it was a good change it, it um definitely brought some uh some new uh, light to the whole series. So yeah, check it out. Especially if you're someone that just kind of gave it a first look at and you're like, oh, I don't like this. It's not Mario. Go back and try it again. You will be pleasantly surprised. Uh, going into Xbox 360 land, a game that... Let's put it this way. 
it's a game that some people see and they're just like, nah. For me, I saw it and I was like, yeah. And that's Earth Defense Force 2017. You are a lone soldier fighting off hordes of insects and giant robots. That's it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Uh, I believe it's 50 plus some odd levels. It starts off with you fighting these ginormous ants and then it turns into spiders and then you're fighting UFOs and robots and it... It, the, the fun factor is way up there on this one because you can customize your soldier uh, before every single level as well as the difficulty every single level. So that definitely helps, especially if you're trying to like uh, complete the game 100%. Um, I will say this, once it gets past the meat, like roughly around medium or so, that's when the game gets very challenging. And then, yeah, I recommend starting in on easy and medium and work your way up. The game does have quite a learning curve on it, and the difficulty goes way up after that. But yeah, you get to equip your guy. He gets um, two different weapons, and yes, I know, two different weapons. Um, it's basically, it's almost like a chess match. You almost want to make sure you grab the right weapons for the job because sometimes you'll switch between fighting giant insects and aliens, and some weapons do better against the other kind, whereas they don't do as good against, well, basically it's... It's an interesting concept. Um, it's a lot of fun. There was a sequel. I have not checked it out yet. But Earth Defense Force 2017, a lot of fun. It's just good old nostalgic stop the uh, stop UFOs and save Earth kind of deal. Um, it clearly has a lot of Japanese undertones in it, which makes it all the much more enjoyable. But I recommend you check it out. And I just cut myself. Ouch. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. I'm pressing forward. <clears throat> Another uh, 360 title, which um, it's a little weird to explain. It's called The Club. Uh, Third-person run-and-gun game. The hope, the premise of the game is to start. It, you go from the finish. You got to find the end, and you just got to run and shoot the enemy players along the way. It plays like a game show. Feels a little bit looser than Gears of War type. Uh, controls, um, but basically you get points for how fast you complete the level, how many baddies you, you've uh, shot, where you shot them, you found the secret targets along the way from start to end. It's just I got a lot of different aspects in it. it. It really is a lot of fun, and it's extremely cheap. GameStop is selling it for like two bucks. Um, so if you like shooters, and you, you like um, and I will, at third person shooters that require uh, a combination of speed and precision accuracy, give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. Um, you get to have a different slew of characters to choose from, and each one of them have like their own expertise. Like one guy is exceptionally good with a handgun, whereas one guy is great with an assault rifle. Um, so yeah, if you're into that genre, check that out. Another 360 title that I thoroughly enjoy is I'm um, and I hope I'm saying this correctly. Uh, near, N not I want to say it's near. I have never heard anyone else pronounce it nier, but I don't want to. Uh, could be wrong. This too is an amazing game, an extremely underrated title. Uh, this too also is getting a lot of praise for how well it's well, it's getting received lately. Um, has a lot of uh, gears of warish, or not gears of war. Sorry, feels and looks a little bit like God of War. Sounds a lot like um, Final Fantasy in a way, like the later stuff. Um, has terrific, atm uh, terrific atmosphere. Plays extremely smooth. A lot of dungeon exploration. With like, it almost feels like a... Um, I want to say takes the settings and the, uh, the, the atmosphere of Shadow of the Colossus. Sounds like incredibly deep Final Fantasy plays like God of War and has dungeon and puzzle solving like uh, Devil May Cry. And the game plays, and the, the battle system is also very identical to that too. But uh, again, a ton of fun. It's got a, it's got a kind of a grim gray tone to it, which I do prefer with these games. I, I like it more if it feels more identifiable, I guess. Um, not to say that I'm a very depressing person, but just, um, it's it's easier to identify with something like it's easier to get into something like that because it's an unknown terror it's an it's an unknown you know there it's it's a gray area where you know anything can happen where if it's like just pure 
you know, happiness and good times. Like, yay, it's good, and I feel good afterwards. But at the end of the day, you know, was it really was it really that deep or meaningful? No, not really. I like my games to have a little bit of have a little bit of deep, conclusive feeling to them. You know, but hey, you know, the monotonous ones aren't that bad either. Um, the last game on here is, I think, the only Matrix game I have ever played, and that is uh, the Path of Neo. I, borrow, I uh, rented this from Blockbuster, brought it home and played it, thinking I was going to basically just do all like the major plot points of all the Matrix movies, and found out that this is a combination of that, plus um, more of how Neo came to hit, like be as trained as he was, a lot of the in-between stuff, as well as a secret boss ending, which I won't give away. Um, really, really fun game. It, it took everything I love from the movies... It, it added in a lot of areas or questions that um, left, were left unanswered. If, you, if you're a fan of the series, um, it was definitely fan service to like the nth degree. It was it was it was unbelievable. The soundtrack was of course awesome. The gameplay was really good, although sometimes there was some bugginess here and there. But a lot of that could just be um, a lot of that can just be uh, how old the game is, and you know uh, Sony was still kind of working out some of the kinks. Um, I haven't decided if the PlayStation 2 or the original Xbox version is more superior than the other. Um, the Xbox version does look a little bit cleaner, although the PS2 version is a little bit more, I guess, control-friendly. Anyone understands what that is. But yeah, um, yeah, those are my games right there, just really quick. Matrix, The Path of Neo. Near. The Club, Earth Defense Force 2017, Luigi's Mansion, Wayne Gretzky's Hockey, and my number one recommendation to look at, Faxanadu on the NES. So, uh, those are, that was my games for this, uh, for this week's episode of Game Tryouts. Let me know what you guys think. Again, if you have any suggestions for me to go and check out, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you feel like I have not done and given these games enough justice, um, just gonna organize them right there. If you even feel like I did enough justice on them, uh, let me know. Um, keep your eyes open, uh, guys. Just remember, don't judge a book by its cover automatically. Games are meant to be fun, um, and yeah, you all have a uh, fantastic day. I'm. Getting ready for the Walking Dead uh, season premiere later on this evening. So you know where I will be. And I hope you all are having fun and uh, doing the same thing. And I will see you all later.